So if you guys did notice, I do have some, uh, I have some of the uh, stock based comp was on our revenue. I mean, our, op our OPEX cost minus SBC. So we can go and start building those out. And this is where kind of I go and say, I have to go and make some predictions like developer and exchange fees. This is essentially the money that Roblox pays out to people. Uh, for developing games on Roblox. And I'm picking 30% and it's not just like a number of the hat. This is kind of what we see a lot of splits for creator companies going and doing. Um, YouTube, uh, if you're a live streamer on YouTube, you get 30% of whatever you make on there. Twitch, um, you go and get a 70-30 split once you become like a super partner. Um, Twitter kind of has the same thing going on and uh, with their super chats and all that and all their donations. So it, it, it is kind of like the industry norm. So I'm going to go and cap them at that. Realistically, developers could leave if Roblox doesn't increase it, but um, that's not kind of what we're making here. We're saying it's going to be kind of fixed standard. Um, yeah, so there we go. That's a pretty easy one to go and do out. And essentially the, the raw dollar amount will go up by however much, uh, by however much, uh, by however much, uh, pretty much what revenue is going up by. So. Infrastructure and safety. Uh, this is one where I think they probably have some some wiggle room in. I mean, I'm gonna cap it out at something. It's pretty much gonna be probably 35% because when we sit here and we think about the metaverse, right? The metaverse is gonna need a lot of moderation. For Roblox especially because they're doing it for a lot of kids. But overall, the metaverse is going to need a lot of moderation or else things will kind of go and get out of hand. And you want, depending on what company you are, you want a safe place for all your people to come and visit. Whether that's uh, through Facebook slash Meta's metaverse area, through Zoom, through Fortnite, through whatever metaverse you're talking about, they're going to need a, they're going to need a safe place. So I think... So that's kind of, that's gonna be kind of flat-ish. Like it's it's gonna have five percent of GMs. So they'll probably cap out, but I think they can go and minimize some of it down. I mean, it's not gonna be through AI and stuff like that. They could go and minimize some of it, but it won't be it won't be all of it. it will be minimized. Probably cap at 35. And then, because I did it off of GMs, I'll do the same calc based off of GMs. Right. Let's just drag over. And believe it or not, but this actually, because. Roblox doesn't have the most robust income statement on the planet. We're pretty much doing almost all the income statement right now. R&D. This is a good place to go and take the averages. 23%. So we'll go and keep it at 23%. 23% of rev.
same type of deal. It's very funny. I was watching someone's stream, uh, Mr. Tealaxify, that does like Call of Duty Zombies. And someone in their stream that obviously doesn't know anything about what they're talking about. Because uh, Mr. Tealex, I was talking about Activision and stuff like that, and how much the stock has tumbled and all the bad moves that they're making. Someone said, oh, like Roblox is so much more profitable than, um, than Activision, and that is just plainly not true. Activision actually has profits versus Roblox. Um, I should be a little bit kinder to them. Roblox actually um, doesn't generate any any EBIT at the moment. They are a pure loss-based company. I mean, they're still growing, but um, which is also where I question a lot of their financial model, because when we sit here, we go, right, they're at seventy-five percent gross margins, which is good, and for a software company, you expect something that's high, but developer and exchange fees 40 percent of gms and then infrastructure and safety which is going to be a cost for them no matter what um like combined it's 70 percent of gms so and then r d i mean maybe we can scale back r d we'll be we'll be kind to them maybe they get some of their r d costs under control economic model just does not make sense and sales and marketing again we'll, we'll still be a little kind to them and say okay maybe they can maybe they can trim it down a bit over time how plausible that is I don't know but we shall see and some people may come in here comment and say you're being extremely bearish but when I look at the I've analyzed a lot of companies that have been unprofitable and struggle to go and make EBIT Spotify is one of them and I sit here and I go for a company that wants to be you know in the leading edge of the future in the metaverse and stuff like that like these these two cost right are gonna be their biggest cost. It's just, it's just, there's no way getting around it. There's just no getting around it. Cause like I said, they're gonna have to go and keep people safe, especially if they have kids that are under 13 on there. That's gonna cost money. It does cost money to develop those tools. So we have all these built out on our income statement. What's really nice is since we did build all those out on our rev, we can just drag over, of course, giving it the old green because it's going from another sheet, except on the fill. It's going to be a font. Same here with COGS. We built those out. And gross margins, sorry, starting to self calc. Developer exchange fees, again, we've, we've already done all these.
So, simple drag over. Drag all these over. And look, boom. EBIT, still negative. I mean, and, I, and I'm like, first glance, I'm being pretty, pretty, pretty darn kind to them. I'm having them pretty much go swing extremely positive. Actually, I know why. It's because this isn't even calculating right. There we go, still. I'm essentially going, I'm giving them a large benefit of the doubt here. Going from negative 29% EBIT margins all the way up to negative 16 at the end. I mean, I have them swinging 7%, pretty much 1% almost every year of gains. So I think that's pretty, like, it's a, especially the first gap down is extremely extremely generous now for SBC of course these are non cash costs so I'm just gonna go and do the averages here come on I'll take FC. Can't do that for all these. Um, SG and A may tune down a bit. Research and Dev probably won't. Actually, sorry, a bit less than what they normally are. So. Times the line item. Oh, that's infrastructure and safety. That's right. Dev fees aren't counted for some reason. So, R&D. GNA. And yeah, I'll go and fix those here in a sec. Get all the formulas done. Make sure this fills nice and pretty. And boom, SBC is done, which then means we can go and do our adjusted, our adjusted EBIT. Which you can go and see the delta there, which is why you pay attention to things like gap and non-gap accounting is for those deltas. Interest income, others. 
the other's net, if I remember correctly, is not the same as the other over here. Yep. So I'm just not kind of going to do that because I don't have a good way of forecasting that out. Interest income is actually going to be calculated down here in our cash list in our cash flow statement. So I'll go and have a link for that. So I'll just do. Just have a link right there because it's going to end up being an average going back to um, what they generate uh, from their cash and the cash flow statement. Income tax rate. Uh, they're not going to be getting taxed on pretty much anything. So, but we'll go and keep the US standard of 20%. And that's actually going to be for them. It's going to be a minus. They get the tax benefit when it's negative. Um, not controlling interest. Not going to do again. Just because don't have a decent way to go and model that out. And that happens a lot of times you have line items that you don't have a good way of modeling out. So you just don't do them sometimes. You don't have to be exactly accurate. Your model is always a kind of check for what you believe the stock is doing. Oh wait, I know why that's that. So shares, I don't think they're gonna really do anything with their share balance in the coming years. They may add some at some point in time, but at the moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's that so it'll be this is gonna be issuance minus repurchase is that the right nope there we go oh plus of course beginning balance so I throw that up there boom balances it foots um, for some stocks I do think for some names like Adobe, I do model out what they're going to win or what they're going to go and um, buy back or not when it comes to shares. Um, okay, that actually didn't take a whole lot of time. So I guess I'll keep all this together with uh, balance sheet and cash flow statement then, which will probably take a lot longer. So we'll move on then. Um, balance sheet cash flow, most of this stuff can be done through their working capital, which is the majority of what their short, uh, their short term, their short uh, term assets and short term liabilities are. And I've already gone ahead and done things like what they're going to put all those down here. And it's just kind of backwards engineering a lot of it. So like this is going to be, what's it? Uh, so like this is just percent of gross margin. So I typically do it so that it's whatever the last year was, unless I have, unless I have a, uh, a strong knowledge on 
a particular item or sp or strong uh, take on a particular item. So it could be something like if it's a retail company, which I don't cover, um, like deferred portion of rev. I'm probably actually gonna go and do average. I'll probably now that I think about it, go back to um, the dev fees too. Although those seem kind of flat. For most of these, it's pretty simple. Tie it back to whatever. Tie it back to whatever the the item that the line item that's kind of attached to is. It's really fast, efficient way. Really fast, efficient way to go and do the majority of your balance sheet. one thing whenever I model things out that I always forget is this one formula. I know it's just a reciprocal, I just always forget what the actual formula is. I was actually right in how I was thinking about it. It's gross margin divided by 365 times days outstanding. Why is my Excel doing that? Excel stop, please. just shutting off my Bloomberg launchpad. I'm only gonna need a few Bloomberg things for this anyway, so I'm just, just gonna stay logged in. Well, that seemed to have done it, actually. No. Instant Bloomberg, please go away. Thank you. So same thing here. Actually, not the same thing here. I know that is that is uh, 
That should be percent of cogs. So there we go. And our working capital is starting to develop. I actually think I did this wrong in my setup. Shows me right. There we go. Percent of GP. This way you guys can see a little bit better. And if you do need me to zoom in or anything like that, please let me tell please tell me in the chat. That's all done. This should probably have a negative ground into it. Okay, now that those are all done, we then can build our balance sheet like accounts receivable. Just did accounts receivable. Except this should be black. It's coming from the same part of a sheet. Boom. Short term investments. Don't have anything for that. Prepaid expenses. Once again, down to our working cap. Prepaid expenses. Look at that. Deferred cost. Guess what? Already did it. P &E. that'll be down into a separate little tab. That's it's another thing that's down here in like a little little panel, something that I took from uh, the uh, modeling class I did in college. Just to have all these little panels for things that uh, for things that you kind of need to calculate out. Should make this right because I'm just assuming goodwill stays the same. Other assets. Did we do other assets on here? Yeah, we did. As you can see here, most of our balance sheet has already happened. I mean, uh, just for the sake of this, I'm probably going to go into a plug if it doesn't balance just because sometimes doing a balance sheet like. Sometimes doing a balance sheet like to go and get it all correct can be a pain. And normally it takes me a while to double check everything. Don't know why that's locked on like that. It's, I've never seen that glitch happen before. 
Next up, accounts payable. Guess what we already did? Down working cap. It's a common theme. See why it's actually really nice to go and do all those. Rev current portion. And look, all of our current liabilities pretty much done. Other long long term will probably do the same thing. We'll just keep keep it the same. Uh, meaning the only things we need to go and do are deferred rev uh, for both short and long term net. So, what I'll probably go and do is actually go and make a panel for each of these. Um, see what percent of rev they are, and extrapolate that out. Just call it deferred rev. Again, sometimes you don't want to mess up how your balance sheet looks. So what you do is you make these nice little panels. And calculate them somewhere down below. Then you can always refer back to them, you can tweak them, you can do whatever you want to them without affecting how your balance sheet flows. I used to do hiding cells, de-hiding cells, and you know, um, taking out what was essentially um, your percentages and stuff like that, and then like going back and updating things was always a pain. So I really grown to love having panels because they do help out tremendously. And I, and I don't, here's something I should go and say. I don't try and fix my balance sheet until I've done my cash flow statement because sometimes your cash flow statement will go and fix your balance sheet because of all the um, calculations that can be had there. Um, all this I'm probably gonna leave in except for additional paid in cap will be our retained earnings, if I remember correctly. No, 
it's accumulating deficits as it's retained earnings, so I can leave additional paid in. in. Asset heavy at the moment. But again, we still haven't done some calculations for things like cash. We have, which comes, of course, uh, via the cash flow statement. We haven't done our accumulated deficit yet which does come from the cash flow statement partially because it's your net income plus uh, amount purchased dividends, which luckily for us, for us is pretty much all just going to be plus negative plus net income and we're still a little asset heavy but we can tweak that later again we can add in a plug stuff like that Acid heavy. Appreciation, amortization. It's going to be our depreciation plus, of course, our amortization. So we'll probably go and keep this. Same. But we're gonna run into a problem here. That's, we're pretty much gonna write down all of our stuff. Which isn't that big of a deal. Since we're we're already asset heavy to begin with, it won't impact it too much. CapEx. Appreciation. DNA is all done. Allowance for doubt full counts. I'll probably just keep the same. All of this we've already done in our working cap. Okay, that's the first. 
Just go down the line. Stock based coffin. Expensive right on that. SBC, the old SBC. Uh, we can leave these. We can do the same that we did over here. We can just leave these the same. And already they're still generating cash. I'll probably keep the same Prop acquisition properties plan and equipment we've already done that it's their capex cash acquired purchase of intangible assets they're actually declining so it'll be the delta between these two. It'll be... That's actually gonna be the opposite. Maybe that minus that. It's not a purchase, it's an outflow. Proceeds from all this stuff, we haven't gone and said that they're gonna go and issue any capital as of this moment. That can change, depending on how everything's looking. FX, we'll keep the same. Delta's your delta. And we do have an issue in that they are creating negative cash flow eventually. But again, we haven't finished this off, so I assume they're most likely going to be able to cover it. Accounts payable. And if not, this is when we start issuing stock. Accounts payable. Prepaid expenses. Prepaid expenses. Other assets. Developer exchange liability. Accrued expenses and liabilities. Other long term libs. Although this is, I'm calculating this wrong already. Um, it's going to be the delta between them. revenue what will essentially be is their change of working cap but
I just want to see what that would do. Um, but in reality, it's the delta between the two. So it's going to be This is just a little bit easier to do because it's a light change in liability you add the change in just matters on which order of operation you're doing to paint it's nasty reliability i mean easier way to go and do it would just be to go and have it do the working cap function but This also just helps me be a little bit more accurate. Because this may not be. It should be the same number. It is the same number. That's correct. Negative working capital. Essentially large. They're losing cash every, mo every month. So, every year. What are they going to need to do? They're going to need to go and issue preferred stock an aggressive clip. Well, it's very funny because when we do our DCF, none of this will actually matter because I'm, you're not going to want to go and value this company off of the DCF to begin with. Go and do our EBITDA. Might as well. Like I said, this company, their entire financial model is extremely challenged. Now, could we go back and tweak some things? Most likely. we can go back and do that a little bit. We can go and say, actually, we'll just leave that at that. Let's see how much that changes things. Still no positive net income. Double this for their R and D going down. Triplet, why not? 
rest I think are pretty fine. Still negative net income. Reconciliation actually got a little bit better. But they still have this issue of running out of cash. So how do we go and change that? And it's gonna flip because cash is gonna become from a negative to a positive. They're gonna have to go and issue most likely preferred equity. Let's have them issue like a billion a year. That still won't plug it to a billion and a half. Have that grow. Maybe grow double and tail end. Oh, I know why. Grow that by 5% a year. Still negative in the back half, so we'll go and push that up. And of course, our convertible stock. extremely asset heavy so we'll go and do a little plug that over there you go again for the sake of all this I'm not gonna go through I probably made some mistakes in my cash flow statement calculations all that stuff like that I'm not gonna go back and change it at the moment
remember how to break the chain on this one. Oh, I know how I'm gonna go and do it. Yes, 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 I know. Well, there no one in the world is getting 10% interest on cash at the moment. <sighs> okay. We'll do it as a percentage of the previous year. That'll get around all of our problems. It's kind of dev error on me. I'll just call it 1%. I could go and change the share bounce because of all the equity, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be a little bit lazy there. But that ends this portion of doing income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. Again, I did some things wrong. That's why I got such a weird um, calculation there in my cash flow statement. Um, so, you know, I mean, this is for educational purposes. And I did, I showed you how to do most of the stuff I know very much correctly. And like I said, I could fish through cash flow and try and make it all correct and all that stuff like that and really do it, but it'll take me a lot longer than it will for me to just do this live on game now and cut it up. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and you know, let me know how you guys are doing in your own models.